My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I'm going to talk for a few minutes on why we should extend the waiting period for divorce from 60 days to at least six months. Now, last session, Matthew Krauss sponsored a bill, House Bill 65, in which the waiting period for divorce would have been extended from 60 days to six months. This was presented before the committee, and it was presented before a bipartisan committee uh, consisting of four Republicans and three Democrats, and it passed through that committee unanimously. 100%, 7 to 0, everybody passed this bill and it was supposed to get to the floor for a vote. And it never get, got to the floor for various reasons, but that was uh, a very popular bill. It was a bill that said it was a common sense approach to how we should look at divorce in the state of Texas. 60 days, once a person files for divorce and the attorneys get involved in everything else and you've maybe you've had a marriage that have lasted for five years, maybe 20 years, maybe 30 years or longer, sometimes the, the spouse is completely caught by surprise and you're supposed to get everything settled within 60 days. Sometimes you even have a spouse or an attorney who's using the 60 day period almost as a baseball bat to bludgeon a person who does not want to be divorced. The person who was on the receiving end of this does not often know that the divorce is going to be filed, caught off guard, and now basically by the time they learn of this whole thing, they may even have a lot less time than 60 days to respond. And 20 years of marriage together or 10 years or whatever it may be, somehow magically is supposed to be resolved within this 60 day time frame. And if you have children, you're supposed to be dividing children and assets and houses and everything else. It puts a lot of unnecessary pressure on somebody, especially for the person who does not even want to be divorced. So in the Texas Family Code for the Dissolution of Marriage, a marriage can be dissolved after 60 days. But at the 61st day, a judge can dissolve your marriage even if you don't want it to be dissolved. The judge supposedly has that authority to just come in there and say, your marriage is dissolved, period. The attorneys love this time frame because when there's just a few days to get things done, it actually creates a lot of conflict and tension, and the attorneys get to make more money during this time. If things were drawn out longer, maybe certain decisions would not be made that uh, somebody would wish later on they hadn't made. Uh, but, but really, 60 days when you have children involved in houses and property, it's too short of a period of time, and almost everybody recognizes that. Again, this bill had 22 co-sponsors last session, and in a committee that was comprised of both Democrats and Republicans, every single person voted for this bill to get out to the floor. And this year, I hope that the bill actually gets out to the floor and gets voted on by the House. According to the Texas Family Code, the guide or uh, the guidebook for many of the family law attorneys and judges and everybody else is involved in the family law and the divorce industry, there are some very interesting cases in which a waiting period is imposed. So, for example, in Texas, in the section 6.004, if you were using a fault-based reason, such as the conviction of the felony, uh, the court may grant a divorce in favor of one spouse if during the marriage the other spouse has been convicted of a felony, has been imprisoned for at least one year in the state of Texas, and has not been pardoned. So it seems implicit that if you are convicted of a crime and you are in jail for at least a year, that the spouse uh, has to wait during that year. To, to actually get a divorce. So there appears to be a one year waiting period in here. Now I'm sure some attorney is going to come up with some technicality and say, well, that's not true. But in the Texas Family Code, if you have to be in prison for at least one year, you cannot get a divorce within that first year. And there's also the issue of abandonment. So for example, in section 6.005, abandonment, the court may grant a divorce in favor of one spouse if the other spouse has left the complaining spouse with the intention of abandonment and remained away for at least one year. So in the situation of abandonment, the spouse has to wait at least a year before a divorce can be granted. It's a one-year waiting period. Now we also have the uh, another section here, 6.006, .006, living apart. The court may grant a divorce in favor of either spouse if the spouses have lived apart without cohabitation for at least three years. So here we have a little bit longer waiting period. If the reason you're filing for divorce in Texas is because you are living apart, you must wait at least three years. This is the Texas Family Code. Confinement in a mental hospital. So in section 6.007, the court may grant a divorce in favor of one spouse if at the time the suit is filed, 
the other spouse has been confined in a state mental hospital or private mental hospital as defined in Section 571.003 Health and Safety Code in this state or in another state for at least three years. So if you are confined in a mental hospital, you have to be in the mental hospital for at least three years in order to have the divorce granted. It appears that the, if, and two, it appears that the hospitalized spouse's mental disorder is of such a degree and nature that adjustment is unlikely or that if adjustment occurs, a relapse is probable. So once again, there is a waiting period in here for divorce if you have a spouse who is confined in a mental hospital. So in, in cases of fault-based divorce, you actually have a waiting period. You have to wait a certain amount of time. And we have section 6.004, 6.005, 6.006, and 6.007. The waiting period is at least one year in two of the instances, in the instance of the conviction of a felony or abandonment, and three years if it's because you have been living apart. And I, I suppose the way that I read this, maybe if you're in the military and you get deployed overseas for three years, um, your spouse can file for divorce on you. That's That seems to be the the implication of this statute, if, you know what, Uncle Sam has sent me over, he wants me to fight in Afghanistan, and he's extended me three years to, to a three-year term over there, your wife can file for divorce on you, or your husband can file for divorce on you. Thank you. Um, this is just so just for the Texas Family Code to put something like this in there. And, or if you're confined in a mental hospital, you can be in there for three years. So these are reasons for fault-based divorce, and you actually have to have something that's provable in order to get the divorce and you have to wait a certain amount of time. Now, we have this new clause, and this is the clause that we're trying to change in the state of Texas in 2019. It's called insupportability. Now, the interesting thing about insupportability is that this is a petition that can be made and no proof is necessary. You can submit your petition for insupportability, and at the 61st day, the judge can say, you are divorced. Insupportability. What does insupportability mean? The Texas Family Code actually never defines that. Insupportability can be, I'm just not happy right now. I just, I just want to find myself. Um, I, I, I think I want to embrace on a new life. Or as I've heard more frequently, unfortunately, um, a wife who wants to now be involved in a lesbian relationship or a man who wants to be involved in a homosexual relationship. Therefore, um, the marriage is now insupportable because um, as I am transitioning my sexual preference, my spouse is no longer attractive to me. So therefore, it's an insupportable marriage. You know, we now have discord of personalities and it does not meet the legitimate ends of the marital relationship and it prevents any reasonable expectation of reconciliation. 60 days, I can force divorce on my spouse. That's the way it works in the state of Texas. It is not unreasonable in the state to extend the waiting period, and everybody knows this. There are legislators, and if you're a legislator and you've gone through a divorce, you know this. You know this. Or, and, and I will say this. In the state of Texas, almost every single person has been affected by divorce. Either you've gone through it yourself, you've had a mother or father who've gone through it, you've had a brother or sister or a very close friend that has gone through it, or a relative. Everybody knows what happens in divorce. 60 days simply is not enough time to work through these things, and, and it may put one spouse at a disadvantage. The second reason is this. There was a Supreme Court Justice, Leah Ward Sears, out of Georgia, and a family therapist out of Minnesota, and they both said, we have too many unnecessary divorces. What is an unnecessary divorce? An unnecessary, an unnecessary divorce is when two people actually could resolve their marriage, could restore the family, could embrace each other and love each other again, could actually work together and with the help of a counselor or somebody from their church, make their marriage work. And these people have said that even people who are deeply involved in the divorce process, that at least 40% of them, some have said 50% and even more, their marriages could be restored. The heartbreak could be completely reversed. And there have been many people that have actually taken this time and have tried to work on their marriage and have come out stronger. And yes, they had a difficult time. But like anything, if you're in the military, you have a difficult time. You just don't get to leave anytime you want to. If you're at your job, sometimes you have a job that you don't like. You just, you can leave anytime you want to, I suppose. But a marriage is a different sort of a relationship. 
It is a relationship in which two people have pledged themselves together for life. And in many instances in the state of Texas, there is one person who's wanting out of the marriage and the other person does not want out of the marriage. In many of those instances, the marriages can be saved. And the other thing that happens in the state of Texas, people get divorced and then they remarry each other. And in the state of Texas, they even allow this because uh, after you're divorced, you have to wait at least 31 days to marry somebody. But if you marry your spouse, remarry your spouse, you can get married within those 30 days. You don't have any time frame that you have to wait. The state of Texas knows this is a problem, but they have this Texas Family Code and it's really compounding problems. The Texas Family Code is unnecessarily destroying some marriages. A waiting period would be helpful. For the people that are going to go through divorce, number one, it will help them to work through things more peacefully and it would keep the attorneys out of it. The attorneys love pressure. The attorneys actually love it because they, they can scare you with time frame deadlines and everything else and they can increase their bills. Divorce is a way for divorce attorneys to get rich. Divorce is a way for divorce attorneys to plunder your assets financially. Divorce is a time for divorce attorneys to actually help damage relationships permanently. Relationships that could be healed. And by the way, the two people that I mentioned uh, in their study, they talked about people that were deeply Im in, embedded in the divorce process. With all of these things being filed, there was still one and sometimes both spouses wanted to reconcile. But the divorce attorneys would tell them, you can't do this, it's a trick and everything else. We need to keep the divorce attorneys out of this situation. And um, by putting a longer waiting period in, we can save a lot of marriages. If you're in a church, you should be for this. If you're in a church, and if, if you're a Christian, if you're a Catholic, if you're a moral person, if you're a family person, you should generally be saying, we need to expand the waiting period because these people can work things out in many instances. Not every instance, but in many instances. And one of the public policy goals for the state of Texas should be reducing divorce, should be keeping families together, should be helping to build strong families. Extending the waiting period in the state of Texas for divorce from 60 days to at least six months, if not up to a year, the same amount of time granted to people that are, that are convicted of a felony, they get at least a year or that, that somebody has been abandoned. Um, it's not unreasonable. And uh, I believe this bill will be coming forth again this upcoming session. I would urge you to contact your legislators and tell them to support this. This is a common sense measure that could help save marriages in the state of Texas and save families at the same time. Thank you.